Hey guys, welcome back to Keys to the Cosmos. I wanted to do a sort of an equipment review for this video. I've done a sort of overview of my setup in my three-part series there, but I've never talked specifically about my wide-field refractor telescope, so I thought we could do a fairly brief video on that today, talking about two of them, my William Optics RedCat, and of course the one I talk about all the time, my SharpStar uh, refractor telescope. Just to sort of give you an overview of some of the specs, what I like about them, and maybe a couple things that are I don't love so much, but both I, I do love both of these telescopes. I mean, they both serve their purpose, so uh, definitely no regret in buying them. So I thought we could just do a quick overview. This is my William Optic Red Cat. Now I haven't uh, shown this too much on the channel as of yet because I haven't been using it too much to be honest. Um, not because it's not a good telescope; it's a great telescope. Just because of what I've been shooting with a lot of that emission nebula over the late summer, fall into the winter. I just needed a little bit more focal length and we'll talk about that a little bit more but um, it's not because it's not a great telescope this is a really good quality telescope and i highly recommend it if you're getting started in astrophotography because as i mentioned in my opinion the best way to start is something simple and forgiving and for the most part that is a refractor telescope uh, one like this is nice and wide field it's very forgiving it's uh, easy to use you're not going to have problem, a lot of problems with back focus and stuff like that when you start using the big, you know, reflector telescopes. You're not going to have any of that. You're going to be able to go out and have a quick setup and not have too many issues with it. That's why I like it and that's why I recommend it. Um, just a couple of specs on this one. It's uh, called the Red Cat 51. So that refers to the 51 millimeter diameter on the end here. It has a focal length of 250 millimeters. So that's pretty wide field. Um, you know, something to keep in mind, uh, depending on what you're planning to shoot right off the bat, or if you've been doing astrophotography for a while, maybe you want something more wide field. This is a great option, something to shoot, you know, sort of like Orion and the horse head together. This is what you want, the heart and the solar nebula together. This is the kind of telescope, especially with a, a full frame camera, you're able to get that in the shot and take really quality images. Now, one of the best things about this telescope is it's a Petzval design. So that uses four lenses. We've talked about that briefly in other videos, doublet, triplet. With a Petzval, it's actually four lenses. So the color correction and accuracy is uh, probably the best out there. Um, there, I, I believe they're not able to make Petzval in like really large refractors. Maybe they are now, but it was always a challenge. So you, always, you usually see it in smaller camera lenses and and refractor telescopes like this but it is really good and I can attest to that it's really good quality images that come out of this and that uh, Petzval design is really nice it's also nice because it has a, a built-in uh, field uh, focuser or reducer some call it flattener and so that's nice with my sharp star I had to buy that separately you know you have to attach that on and you lose a lot of uh, focal length with it but this one's already built in so you don't need to worry that means that when you take an image the stars will be sharp right to the very edges and it's just one less thing to worry about so it's uh, as i mentioned 51 millimeter 250 millimeter focal length built in uh, field flattener focal reducer and um, i guess it would be called a field flattener in this case because it's not redu reducing your focal length um another thing to mention is that it's an apochromatic now we've talked about that before as well apochromatic is the way to go i highly recommend that they're a little bit more expensive but that's why you get that better uh, color correction so apochromatic is definitely something you want and this is one of them it's quite lightweight it's about three and a half pounds you can see it's it's pretty small now this is with the this piece here um let me just put this down has been turned around when you actually take this out of the box it's like this big but this is your your lens shade so pop this off you can see the lens is sort of all the way at the back there that's why it even looks as big as it does so it is actually a very uh, small telescope and as i mentioned it's nice and light you can throw this on the star tracker and maybe even take like 90 second to two minute some guys do two minute exposures with this because it's not too much weight it's not making your say star adventure work too hard to to track the night sky it's not providing too much resistance so it's able to be more accurate and you're able to do longer exposure so that's 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 a really good thing another little thing i like about this and i don't know why more manufacturers don't do this it's really smart if you take off the lid the cap you see here this piece screws off and 
there's a built-in pat knot mask. So that's really nice. It's one less thing to worry about, one less, you know, thing you have to buy or possibly even lose, you know, late at night you forget to put it away. And so this just pops on. Once you focus, you take that off and you image it like this. And then when you want to shoot your darks, you just screw the lid back on. And then that goes back on to the telescope itself and you can shoot your dark. So really smart design. I don't know why more manufacturers don't do that, but William Optics, I think does it with all of their telescopes, uh, their refractor telescopes anyway, it's really smart. A couple of drawbacks. I mean, there's really not much. You can see it's really well made. It's a beautiful telescope, love that paint finish. Really nicely done, really high quality. You can just feel the quality when you when you hold it. And another thing I should mention, it's got a nice bar on the bottom too, quite long. So that gives you a little bit of adjustment. Um, especially if you're using that ADM plate that I've shown on my setup where you're able to just use the screws and move it up and down. This gives you a lot of play to balance the, the mount even better. The only drawback I'd say, and this is just me personally, probably coming from a non-photography background, I don't love the helical focuser here. Um, you can adjust how you know tight or how much, um, um, I should say, you know, sort of how much effort it takes to turn it, how much resistance there is. And so that's good, but I just, I don't like it. I, I'll show you on my sharp store what I mean, the difference. So for me, the helical focuser, I, some people will probably love it if you've been doing photography for many years, you know, you may love the helical focuser. But for me, um, I personally don't love it as much. I don't find it as accurate. It's harder to adjust. Even if you adjust the resistance here with this, with this guy here, I just, for me, I don't like it as much. So that way, that's honestly, I think the only drawback and just keep in mind, you know, it's 250 millimeters. So this is not what you're going to be using to chase down galaxies. Um, it's going to limit what you can do. So you're kind of stuck to wide field um, astrophotography. I've seen guys do Thor's helmet with this. Um, it looked pretty good. He sunk a lot of integration time on it, which is which allows you to do those heavy crops. But just keep that in mind. If you do start with something like this, you're going to be a little bit limited in what you can what you can shoot with it. But it's it comes in at a good price. It's quite cheap. One of the cheaper refracting telescopes, and I can't recommend it enough. It's it's really nice, and I'm going to keep this one. Uh, I have planned to shoot a few things for it with it soon, including the elephant's trunk. It should fit perfectly with this uh, nice wide field uh, image here. So yeah, that's the William Optic Red Cap. I highly recommend that telescope, especially if you're starting out. Now my other wide field refractor, the one I talk about a lot more, is my Sharp Star. And this is a 76 uh, millimeter diameter. You can see the difference there, quite a bit bigger. And another beautiful telescope. Now, never mind my silly uh, laser pointing here with my elastics. It's a beautiful scope, really well built, very similar um, sort of high quality metals. Um, just everything is solid, put together really well. So for the specs on this one, uh, the focal length without the reducer is 414 millimeters. With the reducer, I believe it's like 339. It's a 0.82 times uh, focal reducer. But it does a really good job. I, I've mentioned in other videos, I have it installed. I use it pretty much all the time. It makes nice sharp stars right to the corners and it does a really good job. And with 339, it's, it's still quite wide field, but you are able to go after, you know, the heart, um, the soul. You can go after Pac-Man. It's a little bit small for Pac-Man. I would prefer a little bit bigger, but it's it did a good enough job. There's a lot of things, a lot of targets you can do with this telescope. So I think it's, a, in my opinion, if I had to pick between the two as far as focal length and just have one, if you're starting out, I would still get this. It's still really forgiving. It's uh, easy to use. You're not gonna have a lot, again, problems with like back focus, stuff like that. I just, I didn't even put any uh, extensions on this one. All that's on here is my uh, Canon lens, you know, to attach a, a Canon, style camera onto the back. That's all I had to buy the 48 millimeter um, adapter. But that's it. It's, uh, it's basically out of the box ready to go. You just have to install that reducer should you choose to buy it, which I do recommend you do. And it's ready to go super easy. 
And it gives, just gives you a little bit more flexibility. You're able to shoot a, a whole range of targets with this. Even galaxies. You've probably seen some of my posts lately. I mean, it's not ideal, let's be honest. But um, you can do it. I've done the pinwheel. I've done the whirlpool. Um, you know, I'm trying to think about Mercurian's chain, even though that's not that small. There's a lot of things you can do with this telescope. If you're willing to put the time in, put the integration time in, you can shoot galaxies. So it's nice to be able to have that option even if it's not what we'd call ideal. Uh, a little bit else about this um, telescope, it's a triplet. So it's got three lenses for color correction, which is really good. And it does a really nice job. I'm very happy with the quality of uh, the images I'm getting from this. I've shot probably 80% of my images with this telescope and I've been really happy with it. Um, focal, with the F ratio, so without the focal reducer, it's F. Uh, 5.5 and that's something I should have mentioned with the red cat that red cat is f 4.9 so that's pretty quick it's you know it's not crazy quick but at f 4.9 you can collect a lot of light and image you know some more of those faint objects and and do it with ease so that's something I should have mentioned with the red cat f 4.9 this one is f 5.5 but when you put the folk reducer on it's f 4.5 which is quite quick even quicker than Red Cat. So, you know, what else can you ask for? It's, it's, I think it's just a really well balanced telescope. It gives you everything you need. Um, and again, it's not too expensive. It's just a little bit more than Red Cat. With the folk reducer, that adds a little bit of cost. That is optional. I do recommend it, but still um, not crazy expensive. And this is a great starter telescope. Um, one thing I really like about it, talking about what I didn't like about the Red Cat was the focuser, this focuser I love. So that gold knob is actually what's called a reduction gear on the focuser. And what that does is it allows for just sort of, you can see it on the, from the side here, it allows for more finer adjustments. So on the one side is just a, a bigger black knob. Let me just show you here. Okay. And on this side, we have the gold one. And generally speaking, I only use the gold one at this point now that I've got it sort of set up every time. And all it, with that gold knob, you can just turn it just a little bit and you can get focus really easy. You know, with the helical, it's, it's a little bit more clumsy, a little bit harder to find focus with that. It's so accurate with that reduction gear. I really like it. That's And that's something you, you get a, a little bit more high quality telescope. So the fact that they include that on there, you know, some might think it's a small thing, but uh, I really appreciate it. I think it's great to have, and it has a, a focus lock too, so you can you're not worried about hitting it and losing focus um, if you were to hit that with your hand or your arm or whatever. As far as drawbacks, I really honestly don't have any. It's a little heavy. I will say that um, it's a little bit pushing the weight for my particular setup with my star adventure. I think I get away with it. I don't get perfectly round stars with this, but. You know, for such a simple setup and you know, a cheap star tracker, I think they're more than acceptable. So that's the only thing. I think it's about seven and a half pounds. So it's it's hefty. And um, a lot of the reason for that is this this metal here. So that's sort of the, the cage that holds this piece. And it's it's definitely adds a lot to the weight. So it's definitely not the lightest telescope for, for its size. But it comes with a decent sized bar. It's not as big as the Red Cat. It could be a little bigger, to be honest with you, but it's not bad. I mean, I've seen smaller, so it does give you a little bit of adjustability. And just overall, it's really well built. I have zero issues with it. It's just a tiny telescope. You go out, you attach your camera, and it really gives you a problem. Also, I also find, like, it doesn't lose focus with swings in temperature very much. That's something, you know, they advertise carbon fiber is good for that, but it costs so much more. With this telescope, I... If I just wait for it to go down to ambient temperature, you know, I leave it outside for 10 minutes before I start imaging, I rarely have to adjust the focus. Even three, four hours in, I'll check, and it's almost always in focus. So, you know, what else can you ask for for that? It's it's really easy. You just really set this on your Star Tracker, program it in, and there's nothing to worry about. Uh, it has a, it's even longer here when you pull out the shade, and of course the cap pops off. And there's that lens there, really nice quality lens. It's a coated lens. 
so it, it delivers really nice images and, and so far I've been really happy with it and this is a little bit cheaper than some of the more bigger name brands so that's why you know I took a bit of a chance at the time but I had read a lot about it talked to a lot of guys and they seem to to really like this telescope they make an even bigger version I believe they make a 94 and they make a 61 and both of those get really good reviews as well so sharp star if you've never heard of them um, you know you might want to look into it there I'm really happy with this it's been a great telescope so far like I said it's so good for so many different targets especially come summertime all those emission I mean you can shoot any of them with this and you know you may have to crop a little but it'll do a great job on, on just about all of them so yeah those are my two refractor telescopes and if you're going to be starting out doing astrophotography and you know you're going to stay on that side of it uh, I would suggest a refractor like one of these. Easy to use, not too expensive, not too big. You know, if storage is an issue, these just fit on a shelf. And they're really nice. They're no maintenance. You know, you don't have to do anything, make any adjustments to them. Everything with a refractor is as it is. Just, you know, keep it in good condition and, and it'll serve you for years. You can take images for years and years and it's not the kind of thing you're gonna, you feel like you have to update or get the newest version. With a triplet, in the case of the uh, Red Cat, that Petzl design, those aren't going anywhere. That's always gonna be useful for many, many years to come. So you, you buy something like this, you'll be able to use it for years and you won't feel like you need to upgrade. So yeah, those are an overview of my um, two refractor telescopes. So let me know what you guys think. If you guys have something else you prefer or you guys have used these ones and you, you know, have a comment about it, feel free to leave that in the comments. But just want to do a brief overview there of my two uh, telescopes, an in-depth, you know, sort of review of them. Love them both. Very few drawbacks. And I highly recommend them if it's something you're looking to buy. Thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate it. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.